So the next subject is our conductivity and future applications of that of manufacturing. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you'll hear us say this a lot. One of the best parts about us, uh, Kubros's technology that we're bringing to the market is that we're changing the way uh, and availability of 3D printed or the capability to 3D print electronics uh, by offering a more cost effective solution uh, than what's available currently. So uh, we talk about this, uh, you've heard me say it a couple times, uh, the two main printers for 3D printing electronics or, or effective electronics are, uh, they cost uh, around 250 to $500,000 a piece. Uh, some of them require dedicated technicians uh, proprietary f uh, filaments or inks to utilize, and some have very niche applications or very niche applications. And um, the reason why this is uh, is um, is relevant to our our capabilities and our f in the future of AM is is these uh, as the, they these these companies progress in their niche areas, they're going to be able to find uh, a lot of interest for a lot of different areas, but. Uh, they're going to be specific use cases, um, and while those are those printers also put the availability out of the hands of uh, small innovators, uh, small business, as well as uh, mid and medium sized businesses. That's quite an expense for uh, a mid sized business to be trying to uh, purchase a piece of machinery uh, for that expense, uh, only for it to do only a few things, uh, a few capabilities for three printing electronics. Uh, so with uh, CU-29, the best part is uh, it, was, uh, it was invented specifically to fix a hole in the market, which was uh, the availability of conductive filaments for the most common printer on the market or, uh, or the FFF or sometimes also known as the FDM style printer. Uh, the FFF printer or fuse filament fabrication printer is actually, uh, it lays down a small line of filament and then it it goes back and forth and adds the next to it, and then it slowly stacks these uh, these strands almost in a way uh, on top of each other. Uh, and there's an adhesion that it, you actually can build a solid plastic piece or almost solid plastic piece or the housing or, to something. And so, with um, as this uh, as FFF printer uh, has progressed, it's uh, gotten the 3D printing and design capabilities into the hands of a lot of uh, other people who could not afford, uh, you know, these real expensive printers. And so uh, our filament is compatible with the FFF printer. So the best part about the compatibility is that um, is that it can be extruded within the normal temperature range, uh, and as well as uh, it doesn't require any complex uh, added parts. Uh, the only thing you may need is a uh, more rugged extruder nozzle for your 3D printer. Uh, we recommend a hardened steel one or a tungsten one. Uh, and this is only because of the nature of uh, the filament is it's just going to wear the brass ones down a little uh, uh, quicker than uh, than the FFF uh, plastic or polymer filaments will normally do. So uh, that's uh, actually pretty unique interest there's not going to be an extensive part change out to, to use our filament you uh and if you have a dual headed extruder uh or dual extruder 3d printer you can actually print our filament uh, uh at, at the same time or within the same print as uh as another uh, polymer or uh, another filament that's available on the market and so uh with our uh, conductivity, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the closest competitor on the market were 8,000, over 8,000 times uh, more conductive than them. This uh, actually allows us to fall into the spectrum where we're going to be capable of being used for higher end electronics. And by higher end electronics, I'm talking about your everyday electronics, like uh, small uh, odds and ends, you know, electronics from cute computer mice, uh, my, mouse, excuse me, mice, etc. Um, and that actually uh, will allow the end users to actually now redesign uh, more um, traditional electronics. Uh, one of the interesting things that I found out about uh, the way most electronics are designed and products are designed today is if it has a significant electronic need to the, to the piece or uh, product that they then have to uh, design the circuit board and then that's where they start designing the housing or the product itself is now around the, the circuit board of PCB. And when that happens is uh, you end up with a very specific size device because it's based off the size of the PCB. Well, uh, the exciting part about uh, added manufacturing is that it only puts down the material necessary to be 
begin producing it. There's not a lot of waste like there is with reduction manufacturing, which uh, reduction manufacturing, CNC, uh, machining, et cetera. You take a large block of material and then you use tools to cut it away until you get you to your final dimensions for your final product. Uh, then, uh, you know, that takes a lot of waste. So with additive, there is uh, some waste because, it, but most of that waste is uh, to support the product and it's recyclable. You can uh, take your waste. Uh, they make machines that a lot of people have that they can uh, throw it in. It shreds up plastic. And you actually uh, recycle it and turn it into uh, uh, filament either in-house or some places will, uh, some filament companies will take your recycled material and, uh, and, and, and use it and recycle it themselves. So uh, those are some of the availabilities that are out there for that. But um, with AM, uh, as you build the part now, you can take it take it right off uh, and and uh, now you have your prototype. Uh, here are some uh, examples of some 3D prints that we have available that uh, are kind of demonstrate the uniqueness. Um, this is an interesting frog that we test printed. Uh, we're testing the capability of our um, our dual headed extruded uh, 3D printer. And uh, the interesting part about this is uh, with, you can utilize two materials and this is exactly one of the capabilities uh, that we hope to exploit with uh, with CU-29 is the ability to put copper in there. So imagine this frog where all the black in the frog was actually an antenna that was embedded within the, uh, the, the structure of the frog itself. Um, then we're talking about uh, embedded antennas and circuits as well. And so here's a mock-up of a uh, embedded circuit. Uh, and this is just a uh, basic design that we're um, goofing around with, uh, trying to see how uh, capable it is to design something simple that we might be able to use off the printer bed. And so uh, as you can see, uh, well, you might not be able to see, uh, the actual black would be the uh, CU-29 trace, and it would we could either print it flush with the material, or once you're done printing, uh, the conductive trace, you can actually enclose it or embed it within the housing itself. And so this is uh, another awesome capability that Kupros is bringing to the market with CU-29. And uh, the reason why this is relevant is um, it's something that's not being done currently. They're trying to do it, but unfortunately, uh, the amount that they're able to work with this, it's, um, it's very uh, small scale and laboratory applications currently. And one of the exciting things we hope to do is we hope to bring this mainstream and allow this to come to market. And, um, and uh, yeah, so we're really excited about, um, about bringing these unique uh, capabilities and pushing the future of AM uh, applications, not just in, con uh, in conductive filaments and electronics, but also out of manufacturing as a whole within uh, the industry, within the United States of America. Uh, advanced manufacturing, uh, added manufacturing are uh, really pushing the, the, uh, the next uh, wave of, rev of uh, industrialization and uh, innovation within manufacturing. And uh, it actually get, gives us this unique opportunity to start bringing manufacturing back to US shores because with this comes a, 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 strong, a large amount of automation and forward progress that actually helps us to uh, be able to keep costs lower uh, while still uh, being able to provide these uh, products, services, and jobs in the United States. So, um, yeah. So the 